When Hurricane Katrina roared ashore on August 29, 2005, it would bring with it 25-foot storm surge, causing widespread devastation to the New Orleans region that was catastrophic beyond belief. 80% of the city was underwater, flooded to depths that exceeded 15 feet in many areas. Prior to Katrina, New Orleans' primary line of defense included levees and flood walls that aligned the Mississippi River Gulf outlet, the Gulf Intracoastal Waterway, and the Inner Harbor Navigation Canal. But that protection was not yet complete, and Katrina proved to be too much. The levees failed, and nearly 2,000 lives would be lost in its aftermath. We had miles and miles of vulnerability. Today, the people of New Orleans are better protected. Following Katrina and its tens of billions of dollars in damage, Congress authorized the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to design and build the Hurricane and Storm Damage Risk Reduction System. It is designed for a 1% chance of exceedance in any given year. And so greater storms could overtop it, but it is maintained and resilient enough to resist some overtopping and still not breach. The nearly $15 billion project includes complex navigational structures, floodgates, pump stations, levees, and the largest continuous surge barrier in the world, a nearly two mile wall that protects against storm surge from the Gulf of Mexico and Lake Bourne. The east bank of New Orleans and surrounding parishes is exposed to storm surge from two directions, north from Lake Pontchartrain, east from Lake Bourne. Today's infrastructure significantly reduces the risk of flooding for over a million residents in the greater New Orleans area. The Army Corps of Engineers says the system reduces the risk associated with storm surge that has a 1% chance of occurring in any given year. The Southeast Louisiana Flood Protection Authority East now operates and maintains the system. This level of armor protection didn't exist before Katrina, and that is strikingly apparent when you look at the pre-Katrina flood wall height compared to where it stands today. Our defenses doubled in height. Pre-Katrina wall is at elevation 16 feet. The wall adjacent to it at the surge barrier, the new wall, is at 32 feet. Had it been in place for Katrina, which had a 25-foot storm surge, that surge would have been contained. And the pre-Katrina protection remains in place today. The secondary protection, the surge barrier, is designed to overtop because we have such a large area of wetlands behind it that offers a tremendous amount of storage capacity, provided we have that secondary protection that the old system provides. Plus, there's some low-lying areas along the IHNC that with high tide events, non-tropical events, where the surge barrier is not closed, uh, the water gets high enough to inundate those areas, so that system protects them. The surge barrier is located 12 miles from the heart of the city of New Orleans at the confluence of the Mississippi River Gulf Outlet, or Mr. Go, the Gulf Intracoastal Waterway, known as the GIWW, and the Inner Harbor Navigation Canal, or IHNC. That location is important. Prior to Katrina, the primary flood defense system was the levees and flood walls that bordered these bodies of water. Since Katrina, the Corps decided to put the surge barrier just east of the confluence of the GIWW and the Mr. Go in, in front of Lake Bourne to basically cut off that funnel effect and block surge from Lake Bourne. The significance of this is it pushed the primary uh, line of defense out further from the city. It's currently eight miles from the more populated areas and 12 miles from the heart of the city at the current surge barrier location. The system is much better being further out. It gives us room um, and keeps the storm from getting into the interior of the city rather than as it did with Katrina coming up the canals. And the surge barrier is a phenomenal structure. 1.8 miles long, uh, built to elevation 26. Uh, it's uh, the largest civil works design build project that the Corps has ever undertaken. Um, it has a 150-foot sector gate on the GIWW, 150-foot wide bypass barge gate adjacent to it, um, and a 56-foot wide vertical lift gate. 
Um, it ties into levees and flood walls built to higher than uh, elevation 30, 30 on the, the some Mr. Go and the GIWW, essentially blocking the path of a storm that if you look at it in an aerial view, it looks like a funnel, like a big Y. On August 29th of this year, exactly 16 years after Katrina, the surge barrier would face its greatest test yet. Flood Protection Authority East Director of Engineering Chris Humphreys was confident the system would perform as designed, and it did. This time, the levees held. The system performed beautifully as designed. Um, no, no surge flooding. There was some rain uh, flooding in some, some small areas, but by and large there was no flooding in the, in the city and none of it was related to storm surge, so the system did its job. And as stronger and more frequent storms continue to strike, there's no question the New Orleans area which sits below sea level will be tested again, especially when you consider projected sea level rise and subsidence. Relative sea level rise considers the the increased sea levels and uh, through climate change and also the uh, subsidence of the ground in general and the settlement of the levees themselves. So it it's, takes into all it, the, the levees going down and flood walls going down and the water levels coming up. There are measures built in and there are measures planned to maintain uh, the risk reduction in light of the relative sea level rise. If the flood walls were built with a superiority, meaning they were built higher than they needed to be because of the relative sea level rise that's going to happen over time. We know that um, we will have some need for some levee lifts within 10 years and, and beyond that. The Flood Protection Authority is confident that the system will perform as designed for more frequent storms. Um, because we maintain it and we, like any infrastructure, it, uh, it needs constant maintenance and we have a very aggressive maintenance program um, uh, that is, goes on year, all year long. So we're confident that it will stand up and as designed against future storms.